All right, let's talk about limits involving infinity. And this could be limits at infinity, positive and negative infinity, and in left and the right direction on the x-axis. This could also be limits whose result or answer is positive or negative infinity. Okay, so let's start off by thinking about this question here. What is the limit as x approaches infinity of this function, 1 over x? Okay, so previously we did things like the limits, the, what is the limit as x approaches 2? All right, and that meant what, is the, what are the y values approaching, y values of the function approaching, when the x values get closer and closer to 2, or approach 2. Here we have a similar question. What are the y values approaching when x approaches positive infinity? One of our tools previously was to plug the value in. So if it was the limit as x approaches 2, you plugged in 2, and you try to see what happened. And, and it, sometimes you got the answer right then. Sometimes you had to do some algebraic things. But here, we can't really plug in infinity, right? We can't put that into our calculators. But we can think about what that means. And there's a couple ways that we can think about it. The first way is what I, you might call the um, analytical or numerical method, where you think, if I plug in really large numbers, right? So if we're looking at limit as x approaches infinity, we're thinking about way to the right on the x-axis. If I plug in really large numbers, what are the y values getting close to? So you might run that out mentally. 1 divided by 10, well that's 0.1. 1 divided by 100, 0.01. 1 divided by a million, really close to zero, right? Very small number. 1 divided by 1 million million, basically zero. Okay, so what you can do is think about, as, think about this as, as x approaches really large numbers, think about plugging in really large numbers, what is the function Approach. What does it get close to? It gets close to zero. Okay. And you probably know that the graph of 1 over x looks something like this. All right. And you can tell from the graph that if you move to the right, if you move to x approaches positive infinity, or as x approaches positive infinity, that this curve gets closer and closer to the x-axis. It's asymptotic to the x-axis. So what we have then is uh, the x-axis is y equals 0, so the function is approaching 0. So we can get it graphically. We can get it what you might call analytically or numerically, thinking about it in that way. All right. Now, we won't just look at limits approaching positive infinity. We can also look in the other direction. So we can look at negative infinity. And this one is probably pretty clear based on the graph and your familiarity with the function. Let's suppose that we didn't have the graph or we had a function that was slightly more interesting. Then we could think about this in the same way, analytically or numerically. Plug in numbers approaching negative infinity. So plug in numbers like negative 10, negative 100, negative 1 trillion. What does is, what is this value approach? Well, it approaches 0. And the numbers are negative, but that doesn't really matter, right? Because 1 divided by negative a million million is basically 0 anyway whether it's slightly above the x-axis or slightly below the x-axis. All right, so we have an answer of 0 here. Okay, so two ways that you can think about that, at least two ways, probably more. You can think about it as a table as well, tabular method maybe. Um, but you can think about it as plugging in infinity, or you can think about it in terms of uh, the graph. Now, that leads nicely into a definition for a horizontal asymptote that is based on limits. So here is the definition of a horizontal asymptote. My personal favorite definition All right, a horizontal asymptote um, is this. It's the line y equals b. So y equals b is a horizontal asymptote if one of two things. Either the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is equal to b, or the limit 
as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to b. It doesn't have to be both. It turned out in our first example that it was both. It doesn't have to be both. Okay, it's just one or the other. All right. So let's take a look at an example where that happens. All right, I want to look at the limit as x approaches infinity. And we'll look at positive infinity first. Here. Of 2 plus 1 over x. This is actually not going to be the one direction asymptote that I just talked about. But we can think about this analytically. We don't need the graph, um, although you can think about it graphically. But think about this analytically. I'm going to put in very large numbers for x here. 2 plus 1 over very large numbers will essentially be 2 plus 0. So that will give us a limit of 2. Okay. You can check that with your graph, check it with tables. right? But I just wanted to throw that extra example in there. All right, let's look at this other one here. Um, which would be slightly more interesting than just shifting up the reciprocal function. Let's take a look. So limit as x approaches infinity of this function here, x divided by the square root of x squared plus 2, x squared plus 1, excuse me, right? Now, this one you should try on your own. You should try it in your head on your own, right? Try to figure it out analytically, numerically, by plugging in large values for x, see if you can get the answer. If you can't, that's fine. Is there an algebraic way you might think about it? Then go to the graph, okay? So you want to push yourself to answer these questions without using a calculator, if at all possible. And then if you need the calculator, because you can't figure it out, then go ahead and use the calculator. That's totally fine at that point, all right? So I'm going to put the graph up here. Hopefully you paused the video, you tried it. This is what the graph looks like. It looks something like this. Where here we have negative 1, and here we have positive 1. Okay. And so if you look at positive infinity, you end up with 1. So we'd say, hey, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Well, look, going back the other way, if we check the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x over square root of x squared plus 1, we get negative 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote also at y equals negative 1. So a function has two horizontal asymptotes um, in each direction, or depending on which direction you go. One of, at y equals negative 1 and y equals 1. Right? The other thing that I would say about the definition real quick here is that the horizontal asymptote definition does not say anything about crossing the asymptote. With vertical asymptotes, that's where a function is undefined. You have a line, um, uh, you have a vertical asymptote because you cannot plug in that number because you'll get a divide by zero error in the function. With a horizontal asymptote, that is not part of the definition. The definition just says, can you um, does it approach a number as you move to the left or to the right? All right, and we'll look at some examples of that later on.